Welcome back to another edition of Living Hope, a weekly journey designed to provide hope, inspiration, and education for those living with pancreatic cancer. Sharing the real-life stories of those really affected by this disease and how they deal with it on a daily basis. With your host, the woman who's been on this journey for 19-plus years, Roberta Luna. Welcome. Thank you, Paul. I'm happy to be here again. And I have a very special guest with me that I'm just really, really thrilled to introduce you all to. Um, I've known her for quite some time, and she's been a great inspiration to me. And I know a lot of you will recognize the name Julie Weiss, the Marathon Goddess. Hi, Julie. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Roberta. Thank you so much for having me. It's an <laughs> honor to be here. It's great to see you. It's been a while with COVID and everything. I don't think I, last time I remember seeing you was in 2018, to oh be honest goodness. with you. So, uh, you're looking good, and I just I really appreciate you being here. So thank you. I am still amazed when I think about 52 marathons in a year. It's like, wow, who does this <laughs> and why? And was it for your love of running, or is there something more personal involved? Well, thank you for asking. It was actually both. It was for what started out to be for my father, who was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer and lived only 35 days um, with the disease until he passed away. And he was my biggest fan. And um, after he passed away, I knew um, that I had to do something to help raise awareness and funds to cure pancreatic cancer. And so I thought, I'm going to do something big, because he did everything big. And I thought, I'm going to run 52 marathons in 52 weeks, and I'm going to raise a ton of money to help cure pancreatic cancer. I really didn't know how I was going to do these 52 marathons, having a full-time job and two kids and all of that, but nothing could stop me. Well, since you brought that up, how did you train to do 52 marathons. I mean, I remember because of you, you inspired me to do my first half marathon. But after that, that was it. And I can't imagine doing 52 full marathons. I was only half crazy. I think you're <laughs> totally crazy. to Full do a crazy. Full, full, crazy, <laughs> full so. crazy, but crazy good. <laughs> a crazy for a good cause and a for good reason. Uh, how do you train to run 52 marathons? That's a great question. Honestly, you don't. You train for one and then you hope for the best. <laughs> I mean, you really, uh, what you, what I was told is that I needed to slow down because it really wasn't about how fast I ran. It was about finishing these marathons healthy and getting to each start line ready to go. Just slowed down my pace. I actually took off my watch and, and just, I ran at a very comfortable pace uh, so that, uh, you know, I could finish this journey in one piece, you know? Well, like I said, just myself, when I did the half marathon, I mean, it took me days later to recover. So how long did it take you to recover between each one? And were you able to fully recover before starting the next one? You know, it's really impressive what your body can do. As the marathons went on, I think at about marathon number four, my body was in shock. But then it started to get easier, and then my body actually started to get stronger and stronger. It became really, I think what happened is the marathons, it wasn't about the marathons anymore. At about marathon like four or five, I realized that this is so much bigger than just running a marathon or 52 marathons. This is about, you know, these people, you know, and, and I wanted to reach out to people who were affected by pancreatic cancer and start dedicating my races to people because that's what this was about. It wasn't about the running really or the marathons or me. It was about who I was running for. So running for other people and running for something much, much bigger than myself helped me run with almost like with wings. <laughs> You know, it just kind of carried me uh, running for, for, you know, people like you and so, so many others affected by this disease. Yeah, And I have to thank you because you actually did dedicate a marathon to me, which I do appreciate. And you also ran one for my mom, who I lost I in remember. 2013. So um, that one was a really special one because you had some issues that happened on the route. I don't know if you remember them, but 
you shared them with me with some wristband you yes. were wearing and it just flew off somewhere. And- I remember. <laughs> and that was kind of like her way of being like, I got this. I'm free. You know, it was it was it was very touching. You know, it was like, wait, <laughs> it was very much like her not wanting to be tied down. Yes, so it was. Very yes. Nice. I want to talk a little bit about your dad before his diagnosis. What was your dad like? Maurice Weiss. He was the leader of the band. He was a musician and a stockbroker. And later in his life, in his 70s, he, he, he started doing acting and commercials. Uh, he just had a, he was the life of the party kind of guy. And he loved life. He loved his family. Uh, and when I started running, uh, our relationship actually got so much better because, you know, honestly, who does have the perfect relationship with their parents growing up? But the running brought my dad and I closer together. And he's the one who actually told me to go train with the L.A. Roadrunners and become, you know, run with a group and run with people. And, yeah, he just became my biggest fan. And that relationship we had was really special for those two years that I had him while I was running. So his legacy lives on. So, you know, I continue to honor him when I run and uh, remember how smart he was and worldly and um He's a great businessman and a great just life of the party kind of guy. You know, a lot of charisma, enthusiasm. He sounds like a great guy. In fact, I read a little bit about him. And one thing that kind of struck me is some, one person said he had a great sense of humor. And somebody else said it was a dry sense of humor. So Pretty much. You know, it was kind of a, a little bit of a difference there. but That's true. Um, that's, we all are sometimes different with, with other people, right? How was your father diagnosed? Or did he have any symptoms of the disease before? With pancreatic cancer, as we as we know, uh, sometimes the symptoms are just like you're tired or you have some pain in your side or your back. Uh, my dad actually was just tired and his legs felt weak. He was on a he was on a vacation and he just just thought he was tired and his symptoms were um, very, you know, it's just normal symptoms for you know, day-to-day people, you don't know. And then he went to the doctor and they told him that he had acid reflux and sent him home. So they weren't able to diagnose it until they did the full-on CAT scan because he wasn't getting better. He started to lose some weight and then he got, uh, you know, the jaundice and that, uh, the yellow. And once they diagnosed him, they were like, it's everywhere. There was nothing they could do, not even chemo. He had no chance, unfortunately. However... I do see miracles happen all the time and more and more miracles happen all the time. So for those that are diagnosed, I want you to continue to have hope because I see more survivors all the time. But unfortunately for my dad, um, he wasn't one of the lucky ones, but uh, we made the most of the time. you had. Yeah, we did. He told me to continue to run, continue to train because he didn't want anyone to change anything on account of him. Yes, that sounds very familiar. (laughs) Yeah. How long did it take them to diagnose your dad? Probably maybe a month or so. You know, he just, you know, got sent home and continued to live his life, but he wasn't getting any better. And maybe it was a month till he finally went in and did the full on CAT scan or whatever they did to find it. Do you remember how long he was showing symptoms before he actually got concerned and, and went in to just, have, have it checked? I mean, just about a month. It, it, it might have been longer. It might have been a year, you know, just being tired and lethargic kind of may have been his only symptoms that we know of. I don't I don't really remember. Uh, it's all sort of a blur yeah. that that time period, you know, but I wish we had known sooner, obviously. Do you think that if we would have had early detection methods or any tests at that time that it might have been caught any sooner? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And that's why I do what I do. (laughs) And what you do, you raise funds? Yes. For research? Is that what you're geared towards? Correct. Okay. And you said that he was your biggest fan and that you did the Boston Marathon. Was he able to see you complete that or had he passed before that happened? Unfortunately, he passed just 10 days actually before I qualified for the Boston Marathon. That was our biggest dream and goal that he would actually come to the marathon where I would qualify in Sacramento and uh, see me qualify. And, um, you know, sadly, he, he passed just 10 days before I ran that race. But I ran that race with him, 
being the wind at my back. It was one of those races where everything just went perfect. And when I crossed that finish line and qualified for Boston in three hours, 47 minutes and 19 seconds, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it was a little bittersweet. You know, because I um, had finally done it after 19 attempts of qualifying for bo- or try- attempting. But I know he was there with me. And, you know, I pointed to him in heaven as I crossed that finish line. And, uh, and it was after that running Boston that I knew I had to do something more. Yeah, I remember seeing that photo. And it was different than the other photos. Because, I mean, you always did your marathon goddess pose. But that one was a little different because you were actually, it looked like you were actually pointing up into heaven. So... That really struck me, and and, um, I just thought that was probably the moment that you really felt him with you. Oh, totally. I'm getting goosebumps right now. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. He was there. I know you do a lot of fundraising for different organizations. What type of things are you doing? Are you just, I don't want to mean say just running. I mean, that's very important and and a big accomplishment. But are you doing other marathons or other runs or what are you doing? Well, you know, with COVID, obviously all of the races have been canceled and everything is just starting to open up again, which is great. The LA Marathon has always been my um, most favorite marathon ever. Mm -hmm. You know, it was my first, it was my 52nd, it was my 100th. That was where I got engaged. I mean, (laughs) you know, uh, so that marathon is happening and I'm running that with the Hirschberg training team, raising funds to cure pancreatic cancer there for research. And there's some other races and, uh, you know, I plan to get involved as these races open up, you know, to help cure pancreatic cancer. When I did the 52 marathons, I was running for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Yes. And there we raised over $200,000, which was unbelievable and so wonderful. And all of the support was uh, just incredible from uh, them. And you guys are like my family. Mm-hmm. So... Then there was Lazarex, I think I ran for, and then Project Purple and Hirschberg. And there's so many wonderful charities out there, all on the front lines, out there every day, helping to find that cure. So I'm grateful for all the wonderful charities out there doing um, what they know how to do best. And I do what I do best, which is running and, you know, providing inspiration and hope to those who, who need it. And you, you do, you do inspire a lot of hope and inspiration. In fact, uh, I believe it was the OC marathon that you did that actually Vic and I were there at the finish line waiting for you or just not too far from it. And you actually pulled us into the run with you and we crossed, we crossed the finish line with you. And that, was that was amazing. Was, yeah, that it? was a great experience because especially for me, because then people thought I actually did something, you know, so. I loved that <laughs> moment. I mean, the smiles on our face. I remember grabbing you and <laughs> let's go. We crossed the finish line together. We have a video of that and lots of pictures. And it was such a, such a great moment to, yeah. to see you there and have the support of, you know, I think there was a lot of people there from. Pancan it and it was great to um, have that you know and you and all the friends around us um, that was a great day yeah it was amazing in fact that was one of the first reasons I thought okay maybe I can do this and then it was actually an interview I don't know if you remember it with Larry Clark and I think it was Channel 4 and we were talking and I didn't realize the camera was still rolling and I said I think I can do a half and then they took that up and said well we heard you're going to do the half so then I felt like I had to and with you and, and David's help I was actually <laughs> maybe not the best at training but was able to walk it. I didn't run it, but I was able to walk it. And it was really a moment. And I really have never thanked you, but I know you went a little bit ahead of me and told the announcers the situation because when I did cross the finish line, they announced my name and what I was doing. It was just like, it was a breathtaking moment. More goosebumps. (laughs) (laughs) That was Uh, a beautiful day. You did amazing. Congratulations. At least I crossed. You (laughs) did great. Yeah. And we had our whole purple family with us that day as well. I think we had a whole entourage, like 20 people. Oh yeah. We had a whole group. Pam was there. And I mean, uh, Julia and, and the, the other Lunas were there and it was just, you know, a, a great uh, Jennifer and Trana. There's oh, just so many and people Lupe there. was there. Lupe mm-hmm. was part of that and mm-hmm. she was a very special part of that. And since you have brought it, Lupe in, in um, tell me a little bit about your relationship with Lupe because I think it was really amazing as well. Oh, Lupe Romero de la Cruz was <laughs> this beautiful light and continues to be a beautiful light. Runner, she ran like 10 or 11 marathons and was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer when I heard about her story, I think it was from Julia, 
I decided to dedicate my 52nd marathon to her. I met her at about mile 25, and she had just had the Whipple about a month ago. So she was celebrating being a survivor and then crossing the finish line with me and of my 52nd race. And we uh, just developed this wonderful friendship. And together, we would run a lot of races together and continue to raise awareness. And she, it's my sunshine. So she's like, I think, beat it six or seven times or something like that. She was incredible. Just the shining light of hope and determination. God bless her. I miss her a lot. You know, sadly, we uh, lost her about a year or so ago. I miss her every day. Every time I look into the sun, I I think of her and I feel her warmth. And I always say, we got this. And in Spanish, it was lo tenemos. So that's what she said, lo tenemos. That was our thing. (laughs) And I still say that. (laughs) She was your running buddy, but she was my skydiving buddy. Oh, that's right. (laughs) She was incredible. Like live each day, you know. And I think she did a great job. I think that she was someone that your dad would have really loved as well. Um, so positive. So positive. Yes. <laughs> when your dad passed away, you did something a little unusual. Can you share that with us? Or do you not remember? It was something I heard your mom say that you took your dad's hand. Oh, that was sad. Yeah. You know, it was very, very sad when, when he passed. And I, I wanted, I felt like he was kind of still there, like immediately after he passed away. And he was kind of scared and didn't know what where he was going or what they were doing and when they you know when they took his body away I felt like he was still there and I I I took his hand and I I walked him out to the ambulance you know and I said it's okay it's it's gonna be okay you know you're okay don't worry everything I was cry but (laughs) but I just thought it was just a very poignant everything is gonna be okay I just felt like he needed a little bit of uh, I don't know I I just felt like he was kind of still there, you know, and, and was a little like worried, like, where am I going? And what is this? And like, it's okay. You're fine. <laughs> You're going to be okay. And um, we got you. And, did yeah. having the cancer change your dad in any way? Or did he pretty much stay just as active or the same type of person that he was before? Well, he, his body, um, you know, really, sadly, didn't last very long. You know, he got pretty weak rather quickly, you know, so he, he, you know, but his, his heart, his heart um, just became bigger, (laughs) you know, and uh, the love shined through even more. And, you know, his kindness that wasn't always there before, you know, really, really shined through because you get rid of all that exterior stuff. And and what, what, what is left is the love. And that really was special. And, and I, you know, I carry that with me today. I lost my dad as well to pancreatic cancer. And, you know, they always say that your dad is your first love. And it's when you're looking at your soulmate, um, that's kind of the example you said. Was that true for you and David? David? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I did that, didn't I? What? (laughs) David's my other soulmate. (laughs) David's my husband, by the way. (laughs) And yeah, my dad was my first love. You know, your dad is that special bond we had was really special. And he is, you know, like I said, when I started running, it became even more, we became closer. I'm grateful for those two years we had together as him being my biggest fan. And unfortunately, you know, when he passed, I was actually then grateful, as you brought up, to meet my other soulmate, which is David, <laughs> who is now my husband. And he's uh, one of the most kind... He is the kindest person you'll ever meet, most positive, wonderful coach, friend, and now we're grandparents together. Yeah. So, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, a great guy. If you ever want to um, need some running tips. Actually, he did help me through my first half. I don't know if you remember. He set a schedule and everything for me. I'm not sure I stuck to it, but um, he was very kind to offer that to me, so I do appreciate it. Yeah, that. So he is out there. The two of us, we are together. He shows you how to run the marathon, and I inspire You know, I give you the like, you got this. He's like, yes, you do. And here's how you do it. (laughs) And so uh, that's David Levine. And he actually wrote the Complete Idiot's Guide. He co-wrote the Complete Idiot's Guide to Marathon Training. Which I bought. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot there in his book. And he's also now um, doing coaching the LA Marathon Training Group. The official training group is just the LA Roadrunners. There's a lot of work for him, but he's enjoying it. So the two of us are 
you know, we dedicate our lives to helping other people, you know, helping runners, helping and to give hope to those affected by pancreatic cancer. And there's this quote that I sort of coined at the end of my 52 or during, but talking about when you do what you love for someone you love, that is how the miracles happen. So I was already doing what I love, which was running. Then I started doing it for my running for my dad, then running for the entire pancreatic cancer community. And that's how I was able to um, complete those 52 marathons with very, very little injury. I had aches and pains along the way, but nothing that stopped me. So that in itself is a miracle. You know, raising over $700,000 as of today to cure pancreatic cancer and being able to keep my full-time job. (laughs) I think those are miracles, you know? And uh, so... That's how you create the miracles is when it, you do something that you love, but then you do it for someone else. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for doing those miracles and doing them for so many people that you love. And you brought up a book, and I know you have a book that you have published. If you want to show it, or maybe it is being, maybe they can see it, I'm not sure. But it is called, you want to tell us the title? Sure. It's 52 Weeks, 52 Marathons, The Miles and Trials of the Marathon Goddess. The Miles and Trials of a Marathon Goddess. You could actually just go to Amazon and type in Marathon Goddess and you'll find it. And so far, so good. We've got some great reviews and a lot of people have actually run a marathon after reading the book. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I could claim responsibility for that. But I, well, I know you can claim responsibility for at least one half marathon. That's a good there thing. Go. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, there's some great tips on, you know, life tips and inspiration in there. And along with my story of before I started running and what and how I became a runner and even after and what happened after all of those marathons. And I know that I think I saw that there's a children's book that you've written recently. Is that published yet? It is. It's called We Got This. (laughs) And I even have Lupe in there at the end. It's cute. It shows kids to follow your dreams, do what you love, and give back and help people. Right. Help people. That's what life is about. Come on, let's help people. Especially start them at a young age so it's something they just, you know, get used to doing and, and do that very young. Then I think it's a great thing. And you've been... A great inspiration. And I'm not sure if the name changed or you were looking at something different, but I loved when we were calling it 52 Marathon. No, 52 pace, Races for 52 Faces. That was another year-long journey I did, but not all marathons. They were oh, okay. all different They're distances. Just, okay. So, yeah, 52 Races for 52 Faces. I did that last year, I think, and I finished okay. at the LA Marathon right before COVID. And so we got that last race and I was able to finish it. And yeah, I just keep coming up with things to raise more awareness to help cure pancreatic cancer. And I know you also did a 30 Days of Hope. Um, Oh, that was beautiful. It it was very, very much. All your races and everything you've done have been great and a great inspiration. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with? Any last thought of your dad or just of inspiration or getting involved? I think that there's a quote by C.S. Lewis that I love. Something like, you're never too young or you're never too old to set a new dream or a new goal, something like that. So at any age, whatever it is that speaks to you, go for it. You know, if you want to get out there and, you know, join us and help us raise funds for pancreatic cancer, there's so many wonderful charities, just reach out, you know, and, um, you know, embrace your passion, whatever that is, let that passion shine. And, I'll see you at the finish line. <laughs> well, thank you <laughs> that very rhymes. much, <laughs> Julie Weiss, the marathon <laughs> goddess. And I must say, you do shine. You shine as much today as the first time I met you. Uh, and I thank really you. love you. And thank you for being here with us today and sharing your story. You're amazing. It's not always easy. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. How many thank years you. surviving? 19. 19 years. Yes, Incredible. I'm, I'm 19 again. So Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you are inspiration. Well, thank you. I feel the same about you. And thank thank you you. so much. I appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. Well, thank you. It's a very best honor to have you. And I do appreciate you coming. Thanks. Have a great day. And we got this, everyone. We got this. this. Low to none (laughs) most. Another marathon pose. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Thank you. Well, there you have it. Another great example of why you got to tune in each and every week to Living Hope. A weekly journey designed to provide hope, inspiration, and education for those living with pancreatic cancer. Sharing the real-life stories of those really affected by this disease and how they deal with it on a daily basis. Who knows, maybe you find your own version of a marathon to run. 
If you'd like to share your stories, please contact us here. Or if you know anyone who needs help, by all means, have them contact Patient Services at 877-2-PANCAN. That's 877 and the number 2, P-A-N-C-A-N, for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. For Paul Roberts here at OC Talk Radio, I thank you for listening and invite you to join us each and every week as we stream live from the University of California, Irvine's Beal Applied Innovation Center here on Living Hope, your journey with pancreatic cancer.